This is a tutorial on, on how to use Blender for the planning and animation of orthodontic movement, with the possibility of making clear aligners, such as Invisalign, from that data. And I'll be doing a, a quick one-tooth example from which you can extrapolate to do you know, a full arch or a case of whatever complexity you desire. If you would like a written version of this tutorial, you can go to sites.google.com slash site slash Blender Dental. And it's just a quick site that I tossed together kind of a central point of information for the dental CAD related stuff that I've been doing in Blender. The instructions are under manuals and documentation, instructions for ortho rigging. And I'll be updating them as I refine this process because right now it's, it's very rough. So first, um, I've got a small model loaded up here in Blender. And what we're going to want to do is segment the model into individual teeth using vertex groups. Um, use proportional editing to move those teeth and shape keys to save the mesh at different points which we can then animate between. So the first thing we want to do is define our teeth individually. And to do this we're going to use vertex groups. So I like to use um, circle select by hitting C, the loop select by holding down control and a combination of allowing us to see through the mesh and not see through the mesh to um, really limit what we're selecting. Also you can use the clipping border to really make sure you're not selecting anything that you don't want. You can use Alt-B to enable that. So what The idea here, and I'll just do it very quickly, is to select a tooth I like to use a combination of additive and subtractive methods. So if you hold down the middle mouse button while using circle select, you subtract. Um, we'll add a we'll add a vertex group, name it tooth, assign those vertices to the group. And now what we want to do is hide those vertices, and that will prevent us from having any vertex in more than one group. So we'll continue this process all the way around, naming the teeth accordingly and hiding as we go along. Once that's done, you'll have the following, where you can select and deselect any of the teeth as well as hide them. And I'm going to make a group called All Teeth and assign. And you can make any groupings or subgroupings that you want. So once you've segmented your mesh into the individual teeth, you only have to do really the ones that you want to adjust, and then uh, maybe the ones adjacent to them so you can hide them. We'll go back into object mode by hitting tab. And we will add two shape keys. This one will not be here, so you'll add one shape key and then add another. And we'll name it something like step one. Now if we come back into edit mode, Deselect, deselect the tooth that we want to move and hit H to hide the adjacent teeth and now reselect the tooth we want to move. We want to do a couple things here. We want to come down to this option and select the pivot point as the 3D cursor. Then we also want to come here, enable pro proportional editing, and then what the falloff is you'll have to experiment with to find out which gives you the best result. So, key here is that when we rotate or move this object, um, more importantly when we rotate, it's going to rotate around the 3D cursor. So, we'll try and put the cursor and roughly estimate where the root tip is. Um, later I'd like to, to get some guide geometry implemented so you don't always have to reposition the cursor. But now, if I hit R, and you see this circle which has appeared around the 3D cursor. If I use my middle mouse wheel to scroll, that circle gets bigger and smaller. I'll hit X to constrain this motion to the x-axis. Now when I rotate this tooth, the adjacent tissues come with it. Um, now, this works pretty well for very small movements, but you can see 
if we're moving all the gingiva next to the adjacent teeth and not moving the adjacent teeth at all, it's going to make kind of inconsistent results. So for small movements, uh, I think this works very well. So we will move this tooth and not worry about the fact that it's interfering with the others. Also, this would be a good time before you do this to make a duplicate. I mean, I've already made duplicates over here just for the purpose of speeding this tutorial along. But if you've made a duplicate, you can unhide it and it will be kind of semi-transparent. It will allow you to see, re reference um, the other teeth as well as where your tooth was originally. So we'll tab back into object mode now that we've moved our tooth. You see nothing's happened here. Now if we change the value of the key under shape keys, that tooth moves. And you see we get a pretty nice um, approximation of what the tissue movement might be. Um, obviously in approximately there's nothing we can do about that. There's no data there. So the next step would be, you know, if you had a fairly simple case, you could move all the teeth at once and do it in one key. If you had um, kind of phased treatment where you needed to move one thing before another, you would simply pull this value to one, add another key, enter back into edit mode, edit, add another key, etc. And you could change the values of the keys appropriately to represent the phases of the treatment. Um, animating this is also very easy, but at any point here, you can pick what you want, hit space, export STL, or go up here to file, export, and export your STL model, and you will have 